Welcome to Electron Online. Now let's take a look at spherical coordinates, the three-dimensional spherical coordinate system. So let's take an arbitrary point in space right here. There's our point. We have a vector pointing from the origin to that particular point, and that vector is the R vector. It's the what we call position vector from the origin, indicating where the point is located at. Now, when we drop down a line vertically from the point straight down to the xy plane, we can then see that the distance relative to the xy plane to that point directly below the point of interest here, let's call that point point P, so we can have something to reference it. Then notice the distance from the z-axis to that point parallel to the xy plane right here is r sine theta. Theta is the angle that we get when we take the z-axis and we drop it straight from the z-axis, we drop a line straight down to where the position vector is. That angle between the z-axis and the position vector is called the theta angle. The angle that of that point on the xy plane relative to the x-axis, right there, if we draw a line from the origin to the point that's directly below the point P right here on the xy plane, and then we look at the angle from the x-axis to that line that we draw from here to there, that's called the phi angle. So every point in space, like point P, will have the coordinates r, which is simply the distance from the origin to the point, phi, which is the angle from the x-axis in a counterclockwise direction to the line drawn from the origin to the point directly below the point in space on the xy plane. That's the angle phi. And then the angle indicated by taking the z-axis and dropping it onto, onto the position vector. The angle between those two lines is called the theta angle. So these are the three coordinates in spherical space. Now we have to somehow relate the distance from the x-axis to the point directly about the point in space. This is called the y-distance because it's parallel to the y-axis. Then we have to find the distance from the y-axis to that point right here, which is called x, that's the distance in the x-direction parallel to the x-axis. And then we have to find the distance from that point to the point in space parallel to the z-axis, which is called z. So we have x, y, and z, which can now be expressed in the spherical coordinate system as follows. First of all, this distance from there to there can be called r sine theta. Why is that? Because we have a right triangle here. This is the right angle over here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I think I have a mistake here. Yes, yes, yes. This will be confusing. Ah, that's why. This is the angle right here. This is the angle phi. These are the alternate interior angles. I had drawn that incorrectly. This here is a 90 degree angle, so let me indicate it like that. So that means we have a right triangle here. This angle here is theta because these are alternate interior angles. These are two perpendicular lines. There's a line connecting the two, so these are the same angle, which means that this distance is opposite to this angle, so we take the hypotenuse r and multiply it times the sine of this angle to get this distance. So this distance here is called r sine theta. Now this distance here, y, if you now take a look at this triangle right here, notice that this here is the right angle of a right angle triangle, because this is perpendicular to the x-axis. Now, if we're trying to find this distance here, this is a distance from the x-axis to the point directly by the point in space. So, if this is the hypotenuse to this triangle, here's the right angle, and this side right here is opposite to the angle phi, which means that this distance here, the y component, the distance in the y direction from the z-axis to the point in space, can be described as r sine theta multiplied times the sine of this angle. We can then say that y is equal to r sine theta sine phi, which is the distance from the z-axis to the point in space in the direction of the y-axis. Now, the distance from the point in space to the y-axis, which is this distance right here, this here is the x component, or the distance from the point in space to the y-axis, that can be described by taking first the hypotenuse, and then again, this here is the right triangle. 
So this represents a 90 degree angle of this particular triangle right here. And to find out what this distance is, which is called the x distance from the y axis to this point right here, it's equal to the hypotenuse r sine theta times the adjacent side to this angle. So therefore, it's r sine theta, the hypotenuse, times the cosine of the angle phi. So now we've defined y in terms of r theta and phi. We've determined, determined x in terms of r theta and phi. Now we have to determine z in terms of r theta and phi. Now it turns out that the distance from there to there can be defined by this triangle right here. Here's the 90 degree angle. This is the hypotenuse r. This is the adjacent side of the angle theta. So z can be described as r, the hypotenuse, times the cosine of theta. Now we want to come up with some relationships between the Cartesian coordinate system and the spherical coordinate system. First of all, we can express r in terms of x, y, and z. We can say that r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared plus z squared. It's kind of like the Pythagorean theorem in three dimensions. Or simply, we can write that r is equal to the square root of the three components, x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Also, we can relate the two angles, theta and phi. Well, let's start with the angle theta. Let's describe it in terms of the tangent. The tangent of the angle theta is, by, by definition, the ratio of the opposite side divided by the adjacent side of the angle. Let's see what those are. The opposite side to the angle theta is going to be r sine theta, and the adjacent side is going to be z. So in other words, this is going to be equal to r sine theta divided by z. Now r sine theta is the hypotenuse of this particular triangle. You can think of it as this here would be equal to x, and this here is equal to y, and there's r sine theta. So therefore, r sine theta is equal to the square root of this side squared plus this side squared, because this is the hypotenuse of this triangle. So this can be written as the square root of x squared plus y squared divided by z. That's how we relate x, y, and z to the angle theta. Now we'll do the same with the angle phi. Again, we'll take the tangent of phi, and again, that's equal to the opposite divided by the adjacent side. What's the opposite side to phi? Well, here's phi. The opposite side here is y, and the adjacent side is x. With other words, the tangent of phi can be defined as the opposite side y divided by the adjacent side x. Now next, we're going to take a look at the unit vectors. Notice that the unit vector in the r direction simply goes straight out from this line from the origin to the point p, straight out here. There's our unit vector r, which has length 1. The unit vector for theta is, let's say if, if the point P was on the z-axis, then you could see that the unit vector in the theta direction would be like this. But as the point P drops down, the unit vector theta drops down, and if P goes all the way down to the y-axis, you could see that the theta unit vector would be in this direction. So the theta unit vector drops down like this, depending upon where the position point P is at. And so that's, this is then always perpendicular to the r vector. So the position vector and the theta vector are always perpendicular to one another. You can see how that would drop down. Now, of course, if it leans in this direction again, you can see that the angle theta and the unit vector here make it so that the unit vector is always perpendicular to the r vector. Now, the phi vector is perpendicular to both the r unit vector and the theta vector. So when you have the unit vector r is like this, and the unit vector theta is like this, then the unit vector phi is into the board like that. So you can see as this turns around, the unit vector phi turns around with it like this. And as the angle phi gets bigger, you can see that the unit vector phi goes around like this and actually makes kind of a circular path around the z-axis depending upon where the point p is at. All those three unit vectors are perpendicular to one another. Now what does it look like when we start multiplying those unit vectors together? So let's come up with the nine dot products we could possibly have. We could have r dotted with r. We could have r 
dotted width phi, and we can have r dotted width theta. And let's see what those are equal to. Then we can take the second vector, we can take phi dotted width phi, we can take phi dotted width, let's say r, and let's take phi dotted width theta and see what we end up with those two, uh, three dot products. And finally, we can take the theta unit vector and dot it with theta. We can take the theta unit vector and dot it with r. And we can take the theta unit vector and dot it with phi and see what we end up in each case. Well, first of all, the top three are easy because they're parallel to one another. It's the, it would be one times one times the cosine of the angle between them, which is zero degrees. The cosine of zero is one, so you get one in each of these three cases. But when we do the dot product here, notice that since all of these are at an angle of 90 degrees with one another, these will all equal zero. So the dot product of these are all equal to zero. What about the cross products? Well, let's pick some. Let's say that we do a cross product from phi to r. Phi cross r, notice phi is in this direction, r is 90 degrees in that direction, and then your thumb will point in the direction of theta. In other words, the cross product of phi with r is going to give you the unit vector theta. Let's see what else we can do. How about from theta to phi? If we point our fingers in the direction of theta, and then we curl our fingers in the direction of phi, our thumb will point in the direction of r. So theta cross phi will give us the r unit vector. So theta cross phi will give us the r unit vector. And I think there's one more we can come up with. If we point our finger in the direction of r, and then we curl our finger in the direction of theta, we'll get our thumb pointing in the direction of phi. In other words, the r cross theta will give us the phi unit vector. So here you can see phi cross r gives us theta, theta cross phi gives us r, and r cross theta gives us phi. Now, of course, if we reverse those, we get things in the negative direction. If we do r cross phi, we'll get negative theta and so forth. So we'll get the negative result when we cross some of the others. But these are nice to know, nice to realize. Notice that we have cross products on unit vectors, we get some of the other unit vectors. If we do dot products of the similar vectors, then we get one. If we do dot product of different vectors, then we get zero, of course, because they're all 90 degrees to one another. So here we have a nice introduction to what we call the spherical coordinates. We have a relationship between x, y, and z versus r, theta, and phi. And we have some relationship here between x, y, and z and r. And we have some relationship between the angles and x, y, and z as well. So there's a nice introduction for you. Now we're going to show you how to find all the various operations using spherical coordinates. This here is the right angle. And let me try to figure out how to write that. So you can write it like this and like that. Oh, uh, almost there. I can be parallel to both. No, both is parallel to the dotted line, the other is parallel to the y-axis. Oh, yeah. Figure out like this and like this. There we go. First of all, how can we find the angle phi? I need a break. No, 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 I, I just need to figure something out real quick. Okay. I think I'm there. Okay, ready? Okay. All right, now if you have r times phi, and where's phi at? Notice that it points in this direction. So, oh, take that back. They're dot products, they're not cross products. How about from r to, how about from, hmm, yes, this vector will work. How about from how about if we do r cross theta, do we'll we get no. phi. All right, so one more. If we point our fingers, in, fingers direction in direction of, of phi, we'll have a thumb point in direction. I'm not sorry about that. Let's try it again. We'll take our fingers in direction of r, and then we curl fingers in direction of phi. Then our thumb will point in the... Oh. You want me to do the whole thing over again?